Shilpi. Hi, Jessica. How are you? Hi, hi. I'm good. Okay. Now, Shilpi, can we please start with a uh, you know a bit of introduction about yourself? Yeah. So my name is Shilpi Mittal. I'm uh, a stroke neurologist in US. I practice in US. I have done my education in India, but I moved to US. 13 years ago and I have been getting my training and I have been practicing now for almost um, around six years or more. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, um, so what made you take the GMAT in the first place? Sure. Um, so that is the question that I have been, uh, you know, asked by a lot of my friends when they hear that I, why am I doing GMAT, you know? And my answer to that is like healthcare industry everywhere across the world is evolving. You know, there are issues around insurance and the adequate and optimal patient care, especially in US, uh, you know, the healthcare uh, and the hospitals are run in a very uh, business uh, manner. And to understand such business operations, it is important to understand that basic knowledge uh, through MBA. I wanted to apply to a top tier MBA school because uh, GMAT waiver is available for the other schools. So to get into a top tier uh, MBA school, I needed the GMAT score. Okay. And uh, so in the end, you know, after months of, you know, classes and all, so uh, what was your GMAT score? So my GMAT score was 720. Okay. I scored a, a 50 on my quant and 38 on my verbal. Okay, I mean, that, that's a very good score. So um, why don't we, uh, you know, talk a little bit more about classes, okay? Because um, sure. for Shopee's case, it's quite special in the sense that she's in US. Um, her math teacher is based in India, Vishal. Her verbal teacher is based in Singapore, Roshan. So they were working across all the different time differences. So um, why don't you share about how classes were conducted? Sure. So I'm very grateful to both of my teachers uh, because, uh, you know, my score wouldn't have been possible without their help. And um, I'm very grateful that they made it work in a way uh, where despite my busy schedule, we were able to take classes once or twice a week. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, we had a WhatsApp group and then we will decide on our classes in advance, uh, you know, uh, about whether it's quant class or a verbal class. And, uh, and they were giving me homework to do. And I think mm. the time difference that you manage, of course, you know, we are on a completely different time zone. And I, I have both night shifts and morning shifts. So I, I have different schedule every week. So even despite those hassles, my teachers were kind enough to make it work for me so that they can help me, you know, uh, get to the finish line. Let's put it that way. Okay, and uh, I mean, other than just classes, right? Uh, I'm sure you did uh, some mock tests, you know, make use of the portal. I did. Yeah, so yeah, maybe so you can elaborate did, more on uh, that. A lot of mock tests. Uh, sorry, please go ahead. Yeah, no, no just uh, elaborate more on like, you know. Um, sure. Tests. So I did a lot of mock tests and I did the Jambori online portal. So just a second. So I did online Jambori portal. So I would say that the Jambori online portal was very helpful. Uh, I did the questions from the Jambori online portal. Um, see, I don't have any background in mathematics beyond high school. And I graduated from high school 21 years ago. Wow. Right? That's so, a long time ago. <laughs> It is a long time ago, right? And in India, you directly go from high school to med school. So when I joined med school, I was 17 and I haven't done math since then. So I haven't done any quant since then. And English is not my first language. So I had to start from the scratch and I feel that, uh, that Vishal's classes really prepped me well for, uh, for my quant lectures. Uh, for my quant uh, part of the exam. And 
I would say that, uh, you know, Jambori online verbal portal was very helpful. Uh, I would do them. And then I would run my doubts by Roshan, who would go over the entire concept in details. You know, if I had a question about a particular uh, type of uh, grammar or a sentence correction question, we would try to get to the basics of it so that my basics were strong. And I build up on those basics. So we went like that with, uh, with Jambori verbal preparation. So and I, go ahead. I mean, so what you're saying is that despite, you know, not having a face-to-face -face, um, consultation with your teachers, y'all were doing it via, I guess, Zoom? So yes, I was doing all my classes via Zoom. Uh, on Zoom. And, and yes, yes. Basically, and it was remotely, right? Everyone is in their own country, right? You are in yes. US, um, Roshan is in Singapore, Vishal is in India, and then, you know, y'all try to make it work, right? Like, you know, sometimes it's just a one-hour session, sometimes it's a two-hour session, and then... That is correct. Yes, uh, so I would definitely say that um, we were on, we were in three different time zones, and... Uh, we would have one class of one hour, the other one of a couple of hours, depending on, uh, you know, how many doubts I had. And they were very, like I said, they were very kind to give their time um, and, and were very flexible with the scheduling of the classes. Okay. And I mean, for Shopee, did you take your GMAT at the center or did you do your GMAT exam at home? I took my GMAT at the center. Okay. And how, how was the experience like for you? For me, um, I would say I have not given any exam in the last uh, seven years. Um, the last exam that I gave was my, you know, my boards, my medical boards. And, uh, and this was a very different type and new type of exam for me altogether, like I mentioned earlier. So I was very nervous in general. Uh, usually the exam centers are, uh, you know, quick to get you into the room and all of that. Unfortunately, it was not the case this time, and um, and I was late in the room by almost 15, 20 minutes, uh, despite me making it on time. But once you get into the exam room, you are in that exam mode, and I feel that is very important to be in that exam mode, not being disturbed by anybody around you, and um, and you know I I enjoyed that experience, like you know overall. Um, and I do feel that uh, GMAT is like a very quick exam overall. The exams that I've given in the past, they're usually like eight hours exam. They last for two days. You go first day, give an eight hour exam. You go the second day, you give another eight hour exam. So this was a very quick exam in that context for me. So the break time was like eight minutes, but the break time is never enough. You, uh, you, know, you eat, drink, and then you're back in the room. So overall, I think like uh, I have not given an online exam, so I cannot compare it to the two, but I felt that giving the exam at the center definitely gave me confidence that I can do it. Okay. And um, so what is going to happen now, you know, now that you have gotten your score? So what's the next, you know, step for you? Yeah. So my goal is, you know, I'm in the... Um, I work in a hospital, so my goal is to, um, you know, climb the ladder in the hospital and, um, and MBA was one of the things to get my seat at the table, let's put it that way. And um, I'm planning to apply to executive MBA programs and my goal is like a Wharton uh, executive MBA okay. program. And Sure, sure. And um, do you have any like final tips for, you know, others uh, who are pursuing their GMAT right now? Any things that work for you, you know, that you can use to yeah, you know, advise absolutely. them? Yeah, absolutely. I would say perseverance. You know, perseverance is very important. Don't give up. Um, it eventually materializes. Uh, if you think, uh, if you truly believe in yourself, you will get it there. Uh, always follow what your teacher uh, has asked you to do. You know, that really helped me. Like if Vishal has laid out a plan about, hey, Shilpi, we got to do this in this next week before we connect again, you know? So I always made it a point that I have to cap catch up on my homework. 
So I think that is very important, uh, paying attention to what your teacher has to say. And um, because your teacher knows what you need to know for your exam. So I think that is very important. I would say um, that one of the things that did help me was like I enrolled in the GMAT club question of the day and I would get this question um, you know every morning and that would be like I would say that would um, like talk about a new concept every time so I would do those question of the day uh, and uh, and I would say like uh, at least if you have, if, even if you know something, you can always make it better uh, by learning new techniques. So there are things that I knew even before I started, uh, you know, the GMAT preparation with Jambori, but that knowledge gap was there. And that knowledge gap was filled in by Vishal and Roshan for me. So I think, uh, like I said before, like listening to your teachers is equally important and doing your mock tests. So mock tests definitely give you confidence, help you understand how you need to perform in a time bound manner. Uh, time is always scarce on GMAT exams. So performing to the best of your ability based on the available time is the key to success in the exam. Okay. And um, I mean, just to share with everyone, um, Shopi is really an inspiration. She's, you know, a doctor. She's a mother of two. Um, she, you know, she's also taking the GMAT. So I think if she can do it, I'm sure, you know, everyone else can do it. Like what she said, you know, perseverance is key. So, you know, don't give up, right? Don't give up. Pursue your yeah, dreams. don't give up. And I would say, you know, family support is equally important for a person like me. See, uh, um, I have a very busy husband as well. So during the COVID times, we were, because I gave my exam and I prepared for my exam during the COVID times when we were at the peak of COVID cases in United States. So both me and my husband were work, are working full time. We have always worked full time and we have two little kids. So yes, to say if I can do it, anybody can do it for sure. Uh, and I would say that my husband's support was very important. So if you have a friend or family who can support you to help with your other things, uh, you know, so I think that is very important too. So if you have kids, if your family can support you, because without their support, you cannot do anything. And without my husband's support, I would not have been able to, uh, you know, get to this point where I scored a 720 despite my physician background, not my medical background. And I don't have any degree in math, physics, anything like, you know, like for that matter. So I, I have no, like, I have no background in the exam that I gave, you know. So, um, Shopi, you are planning to do the MBA this year or next year or? So, plan? 2022, fall of 2022. Ah, okay, okay. So, you will be starting on your applications soon, right? I am going to start working on my applications very soon. Yes, correct. Okay. So, um, we really wish you all the best, Shopi. Do Thank keep you. us updated, you know, once you I get will, I will definitely. Okay, we really hope. that you know you get into the school of your choice and you know that will be your first step of climbing the ladder you know in the hospital <laughs> not literally but you know yes uh thank yeah. you so much okay Jessica. so um thank you once again for your time Shopee.